On this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq, the people of Fallujah getting clean water. And the U.S. and Iraqi Air Force working together to improve capabilities. Don't miss these stories and more on today's FJI. Hello, I'm Air Force Sergeant Braden Smith. Welcome to this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq. Most people don't have to worry about where their water goes when it disappears down the drain. Airman First Class Michael Williams reports on how a project in Fallujah will make that city's water safer. Imagine drinking the water your neighbor took a bath in, or walking in the water that was flushed down the toilet of a restaurant bathroom. That is the grimy problem Alambar Province's second largest city, Fallujah, deals with because of leaky septic tanks. So they've always had a black water running through the center of the streets. So it's pretty gross for the kids to play soccer and uh, Obviously, disease is uh, quite a significant problem. Soon, that will change. The Fallujah sewer system, started by the U.S. State Department and Department of Defense, will put an end to raw sewage in the streets and in the Euphrates River, which is the source of the area's drinking water. The Fallujah sewer system project has been in existence since 2006 and is the province's largest development project to date. It's a huge effort um, from the, the participation of the city from uh, design engineers forward in America, from the contractors, obviously, and from the management system through U.S. Corps of Engineers. The water plant is a huge sign of progress in a city that has had its setbacks in the past. But now, Fallujah is safer, and Iraqis are moving back to their homes. In a weird way, the rapid development provides some interesting challenges for planners to overcome. The plant itself it was scheduled to satisfy the demands of Fallujah City till 2025. However, that 2025 is quickly advancing this way because of the improved security and the growth of the city. And that means the country is in an upswing that can only be matched by the determination of Iraqis to develop their country and clean up their cities, beginning with the water. Airman First Class Michael Williams, Fallujah, Iraq. Iraqi forces continue to grow with more manning and resources. Airman First Class Priscilla Christensen shows us how U.S. forces are helping the Iraqi Air Force expand their capabilities. It was a historic day for the Iraqi Air Force as U.S. leaders transferred ownership of 11 Cessna aircraft as well as the King Air 350 to Iraqi forces during a ceremony at Al Muthana Air Base in Baghdad. And so today it is the first aircraft that pilots in the United States Air Force also fly. The Iraqi Air Force will use the new fleet of Cessnas to train and graduate 130 of their pilots. These new pilots will be the foundation of the new Iraqi Air Force. Eventually, Iraqi pilots will move on to flying the King Air 350, an intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, or ISR, aircraft. This new King Air ISR aircraft will have the latest ability to use cameras uh, for intelligence and surveillance. Making Iraq the first country in the world with this type of capability. Air Force capabilities are growing as planned. And we are very happy to see this capability get more and more big. With the new aircraft, the Iraqi Air Force can play a larger role in coalition operations throughout Iraq. Airman First Class Priscilla Christensen, Al Muthana Air Base, Iraq. The Iraqi Air Force expects to double in size by the end of next year to 6,000 airmen and 133 aircraft. Coming up, we head out to Yusufia on a joint air assault. Here's your raid report. Sons of Iraq groups and local citizens led U.S. soldiers to the site of several weapons caches in the Salah ad Din province. The caches contained rockets, mortar rounds, grenades, and various explosives. Iraqi national police officials confiscated weapons in the Karata district of eastern Baghdad. They confiscated over 200 AK-47 assault rifles and pistols without incident, injury, or property damage. Iraqi army soldiers seized weapons in Baghdad as they continued efforts to secure the city. The soldiers seized rocket-propelled grenade launchers, anti-armor RPG warheads, and detonators. U.S. soldiers seized weapons caches throughout Baghdad. The soldiers found rocket-propelled grenades, hand grenades, and rocket launchers. And that's your raid report. I'm Petty Officer Patrick Dilley.
Here are the latest Operation Iraqi Freedom headlines. Prime Minister Maliki and Turkey's Prime Minister signed a Supreme Strategic Cooperation Convention designed to provide a framework for increased political, security, economic and cultural cooperation between the two countries. The final U.S. Surge Brigade is redeploying thanks to security gains achieved by Iraqi security and coalition forces and an increase in the capabilities of the Iraqi security forces. The Iraqi finance minister met with the Ministry of Displacement and Migration minister and agreed to allocate $83 million to aid internally displaced persons and $42 million to aid Iraqi refugees. High school students taking national exams to earn their diplomas say the environment has improved drastically since last year. Those are your headlines from around the region. I'm Airman First Class, Shaylin Jordan. Greetings from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. My name is Bill Schroxel. I'm the mayor of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Almost every building and store that you'll see in the downtown area of Gettysburg is involved either in the production of historical works or artworks. Of course, Gettysburg is synonymous with the great battle of the Civil War. It was the largest battle ever fought on the North American continent. 160,000 men, both Union and Confederate soldiers, fought here. A lot of people don't realize that this was uh, Eisenhower's home in the middle of the battlefield here at Gettysburg. After World War II, he retired from the military and had liked this area, so he and Mamie came to Gettysburg and searched for a home. This is the Gettysburg Cemetery. It was on this spot that Abraham Lincoln delivered his Gettysburg Address. We honor you for your service to this great nation. If you're ever in South Central Pennsylvania, come by and see us. Coalition forces are working with the Iraqi Army and police as they prepare to take over security operations. Army Sergeant Desiree Wright takes us to Yusufia, where the teams met up for a joint air assault operation. Iraqi police and the Iraqi Army are working together to keep the people of Yusufia safe and their city secure. Operation Chelsea Creek, a combined effort air assault with coalition forces of the 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division Rakassans, kicked off the morning of June 14th. Right now, we worked with the Iraqi army in places where there was no army and no police. We have been welcomed and supported by local citizens. The mission's purpose? For the IA and IP to show a unified presence to the people, disrupt any anti-Iraqi forces, and find any caches that might be in the area. The combined teams patrolled the city as the IP Sherta and IA knocked on doors asking residents if they may search their homes. The people's responses were very supportive and we weren't shocked. The citizens say we are happy and they say you are welcome here. We feel safer since you came and after you leave. I, I had no questions, um, you know, about how the uh, operation would go um, with the Sherta, um, just because we're with them uh, almost every day. We work with them every day, and with with the training, you know, that's just brought in, you know, it's it's 100 percent better now. So um, I, I don't hesitate to take those guys in control. Reporting from Patrol Base Yusufia for the Third Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne Division Rakassans. I'm Army Staff Sergeant Desiree Wright. And that wraps up this edition of our program. Be sure to log on to mnf-irak.com, where you can learn all about the progress coalition forces are making throughout the country. If you have story ideas, we'd love to hear them. Just email us at fji.irak.centcom.mil. From all of us here at AFN and Freedom Journal Rock, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.